Good evening, Lake Erie Council. My name is Jared Blundy. I'm your Firelands Camp Director. And today I am here with some very special guests to help with us with our Wolf Den meeting. So welcome, Julia, who works alongside me for Lake Erie Council. And welcome, Michelle and Flannery and Declan is in there somewhere too, right? Yes, he's over there. Now he's behind it. <laughs> well, thank you guys. Thanks. Thank you guys so much for joining us today for our DEN meeting. We have a fun plan for uh, some activities today. We're going to do the adventures in coins, right? Yes, yes, we are. Very good. Well, while our uh, friends are all gathering up for our DEN meeting here across Lake Erie Council, we have a couple of cool things to get started with. And uh, if you have any questions or comments or want to interact with us in the lesson, just put a comment in the comment box below and we'll try and answer any questions while we're live with you here today. But uh, Julia, can you explain what our first activity here is? I see you have a little triangle of coins there. I do, I have 10 pennies and right now they're facing me, but I'd like to have them so they're facing towards my roll of pennies up there. But you can only move three coins. So I wanna see you know, if you all can figure that one out. So I've got mine here too. So I have to get this triangle to go instead of facing me, face towards you. Yeah. All right. Seems uh, seems kind of impossible there, Julia. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let me can try some possibilities. You know what to so, I, I moved one. I'm gonna take uh, I think the three off the top here. Yeah. Well, that doesn't look like uh, a triangle anymore. Oh, no, that's not quite right. Uh, let me put those back. So if you're, uh, if you're playing along at home and you grab uh, some materials for this lesson, you're going to want a handful of coins. For this one, you need 10 different coins arranged four, three, two, one. Uh, you can also look in the description for some other materials to gather for our upcoming activities, a piece of paper, a pencil. If you're going to build a scale desk, there's some materials there for it. Uh, let's try another thing. What do you think, uh, Flannery? <laughs> Any ideas? Look, look at Jared's pyramid. Which one should he move? I move this one. All right, I'm gonna put that one right up top, I think. What do you think next? That one. You gotta tell them. Yeah, tell them when to stop. Do you think this one? Right there? Yeah. Yeah. Where should I put this one? Um, right there. Next to the one that you just yeah. placed. Up here next to the one I just did. All right. Hmm. Well, if I move this other one, kind of like it. Looks like we're close. I like the design, but not quite pointy enough. I'm gonna try again. I like that first one. Let's see. Um, that one. This one here? Down one time. Down one Down from one. that one. Oh, okay. Oh, that looks pretty close. What should I do next? Should I use one of these other pointy ones? Yeah, that one. All right, where does this one go? Um, right on this side. Yeah. On the right side, on the bottom toward you. Ah, oh, wow. look at you that! You guys did that it. Out. <laughs> Good job. Well done. So we only moved three different coins and we completely changed the direction of the triangle. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Good job, guys. All right. And while we're still uh, gathering up, if you're playing along, uh, I think Julia has a, uh, a higher lower question for us. I think you have a really old penny there, huh? A really old coin from Canada. And I want people to try to guess how old this coin is. All right, so she's got a, a and it's a, actually a half a penny, and look how much bigger it is than our penny. <laughs> hmm, why does it make so any funny. sense? Yeah. All right, so we'll guess how old. Canadian money. 
Julia's uh, Canadian oh, pennies. Yeah, mm-hmm. Ah, look up on my mommy's face. That's enough. That's okay. No. Declan Flannery, do you guys have any guesses on uh, Julia's penny before we do our, our flag ceremony and our scout oath and scout law? Mm-hmm. Oh, Declan, you have one? Um, I don't know if I'm thinking of the right one, but I I think it was in, but... Um, What's your guess? Um, 1827? Ooh, in the 1800s. Mm-hmm. No, that's... no, 1827. Yeah. Close, but not not quite. You're you're pretty close there. All right. And Flannery, do you have a guess? 66. <laughs> <laughs> the year 66. That'd be pretty old. Yeah. There's an emperor on it. All right. Well, if there's anybody else watching out there and wants to put in a guess, we'll reveal how old Julia's Canadian half penny is in just a few minutes after our opening ceremony. And uh, I believe our Cub Scouts over there are going to help us to get started with that, right? Yes. Fantastic. I know that you guys had some flags there. I've got a flag here in my uh, my room as well. Who's going to start us off with the Pledge of Allegiance? Here. Hold on. Let me... You're going to hold this in. Or you going to unfold it like? Okay, you got to unfold it that way. Here, it's better if you stand Keep over here. Keep unfolding it up. Come here. Go to that end. Come here. No, you stand, stand where I'm standing. Just keep some folding and try. Yeah, it's good. Keep going. Hold it straight. Hold it straight. All right, come stand where I am. All right. Uh, mm-hmm. um, I know how to do this. Yeah, he's got it. I'm just holding it so he doesn't drop it. You don't need to hold it. No one needs to hold it. Up. All right, hold later you want to see. Hold it up high. Up high. Very good. Yeah. Great. <laughs> Hold it up. All right, right we're going to start Deep. with the scout oath, okay, guys? How about we start with the Pledge of Allegiance? Three. Oh, yeah, that's right. The pledge there. Yep. <laughs> yes. No worries. So we Show salute, right, right, if we're in uniform? Right. Mm-hmm. right. Hand over the heart if you're not. All right. On my, or <laughs> I, <laughs> pledge. I pledge. I pledge allegiance <laughs> to the flag of the United <laughs> States of America. <laughs> And, and to the republic for which it stands, stands one nation, nation under, God, under God, indivisible, indivisible liberty, with and, liberty justice and justice for all. All right, now our signs are up. On my honor, I will do my best to do my duty to God and my, God and my country and to and obey, to obey the Scout the law. law. To help, help other, other people, people at, at all, all times, times, to keep, to keep myself physically strong, strong mentally, mentally awake, awake, and morally, and morally straight. straight. Very good. Yeah. And the A scout, scout is trustworthy, trustworthy loyal, loyal, helpful, helpful friendly, courteous, kind, kind, obedient, obedient cheerful. cheerful Thrifty, brave, <laughs> clean, and, and reverent. Very good, too. Thank you guys so much for helping us with that. Absolutely. And we, we took a selfie for this day. Oh, that's good. <laughs> yeah. Well, again, uh, thanks for joining us, everybody who's live with us. We are we have our special guests, Julia and Michelle and Flannery and Declan, all from uh, Pack 3800 out of Garfield. So thanks for uh, helping us with our vending meeting today. We're doing the adventure Adventures in Coins and learning that uh, coins are more than just money. And today we're going to learn about how, how to spot uh, various markings on our different coins and what they mean. And then we're going to play some games and do a couple of experiments and try and determine the value of our different coins because there's lots of different ones. Hopefully throughout this lesson, you're going to learn a little bit about following directions. We're going to practice a little bit of math skills. 
We're going to estimate some weights with a cool experiment near the end. And we're going to keep in mind that a scout is trustworthy, especially with money. It's one of the most important points of the scout law. It's that very first one. And we're talking about money. You always want to be trustworthy. So Julia. Yes. So we have got any guesses on the age of the coin yet? Other than no guesses online yet, so maybe we'll we'll uh, we'll continue to let people guess. Um, 1776. 1776 is another guess. Yeah. Older or younger, Julia? Um, it is newer than 1776. And our other guess was 1827. Is it newer or older than that? It's newer than than that. All right, so a little bit newer than 1827. All right, Jacqueline, do you want to come sit next to me for this? Okay. So now, uh, um, Jared, earlier we were kind of talking about it, and you kind of asked um, if it was older than your parents. It did, yes. So I wondered if it was older than my parents, who are in their 60s. I said, yes, it's older than them. Older than them. Okay, so we're talking uh, older than 1950s or so. Right. Let's see. Is it uh, is it in the 1800s? It is. It is in the 1800s. All right. So somewhere between 1827 and 1899. Is it closer to the bottom of that range or closer to the 1900s of that range? It's um closer to the bottom of that range. Mm, okay. So talking close to the 1830s. Yes. Mm. Okay. Michelle, do you have a guess? 1832. Well, you're really, really close. It's not quite that old. Okay. Mm. okay. 1835. Oh, you're even, even closer, but a couple more years. Mm, a couple is usually two. So if it's two more than 1835, Declan, do you know what it is? Um. Very close to the other guess. 1837. It is, it is. Perfect. Yeah, so how how uh, old, Declan, would that make this coin? Mm, that's a good math, good math question right there. Right. So can you do that in your head, Declan? <laughs> <laughs> so you would write, bless you, you'd write down uh, 2020. And you'd subtract 1837 from that. That will tell us how old it is. Right. So let's uh, let's let our folks at home try that one as well. If it's uh, if it's 2020 minus 1837, we'll see if people can uh, figure out how old the coin is. Yes. Okay. Well, now, well, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, so we're going to kind of go and we're going to now look at some coins and we're going to look at the different parts of the coin. So this I have right here is a dollar coin. Can you all see this? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So yes, that's good. You got the magnifying glass. Some of them you might need to use a magnifying glass to look at. So um, on coins, you, you might hear um, like heads and tails. So what part am I showing right now? Heads. Heads. Okay. Definitely heads. Tails. The opposite side would be? Tails. That's right. Awesome. So, and on, on this coin, on the head side, which is the head part, it's called a bus. Um, it's going to have some writing on it. And this one is a liberty. And then down in the bottom, it tells me when it was made. Now, this one's kind of different because it's got two years on it. Can you want to guess maybe what those are? What are the years? Hmm. I need my magnifying glass for that one. Yeah. Can you see the years on yours, Steve? They're on the bottom of the head. So on the bottom, underneath the bust. Like this one. So this was a, what's called a bicentennial coin. So it was done in 1976, Ooh. when our country was 200 years old. So it says 1776 to 1976. Is that what yours says? Very cool. 
Okay, that. And then it has an Mine, mine is the exact same thing. Mine says 1776, 1776. Yeah, you got the same coin there. So do you have right underneath the, the head? What does that say? Can you read? I still don't. What does it say? Right there. Right, 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 right. Magnifying glass. We trust good That says, "In God we trust." In God we trust. Yeah. Now, we flip it over to the other side, which is called what? What is it called? The one was called heads. This is called one dollar. What is this called? It's, it's called a one dollar. No, yes, yeah. yeah. you're right. It's a one dollar yeah. coin. Mm -hmm. Tails. Yeah, the tails. And on here it says United States of America, so we'd know what country the coin is. Because I've got some other coins here, and I'd be like, well, where are they from? And I'd have to to read on it. Again, this one's a coin. Canadian coin. And it says how much it's worth on this coin. How much is it? I think you already um, told me. How much is it? It is 1776. No, how much money is it? The has got it. The one, right? One. Yeah. One dollar. One dollar. Yeah. 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 Already see before you. Uh, Ree, I knew that all along. And uh, Julia, all those different words in, the, in there, those are the inscriptions, right? Right. Cool. I knew it already. So one of the things about with this coin, with the um, bicentennial, it has the Liberty Bell. Okay. And there is, um, the Liberty Bell has a crack in it. Does anyone know where the Liberty Bell is? If you wanted to go see it? I believe that's in Pennsylvania, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Philadelphia, right? Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. So if I wanted to go see the Liberty Bell, um, what might be another place I might want to go visit? Mm. Well, I'm in Philadelphia. I yeah. Yes. I think you'd probably want to go visit where the uh, Declaration of Independence was signed. Uh-huh. And that's going to be the same place where the Liberty Bell is. But mm -hmm. I probably would like to go see where they make all the money. Ooh, that sounds like a fun Oh, yeah. yeah. it is. Yeah. You think they'll give us any? <laughs> yeah, well, you can always hope. <laughs> so our coins, they're either made oh, that's, in that's uh, Philadelphia, Mints, in it there, or if you went out to the Mile High City, does anyone know where that might be, Jared? Yeah. You know oh, where that's that in is? Denver, out in Colorado. Yes, Denver. Yeah. So if you have a coin that has a D on it, it means it was made in Denver. If it has a P, it was done in Philadelphia, or it might not say anything, and that still would be Philadelphia. Maybe that's not crack on it. And there's a couple of other places that they're not usually um, coins that are circulated. It is a crack. Yeah. Looks like my two quarters here. One doesn't have any uh, yes, mint on it, so that would be Philadelphia, and the other one yes. has a P on it, which would also be Philadelphia. Right. We've got a presidential one dollar coin exactly. over here, and it actually has the mint on the side of it, which is really interesting. If you can see that, it was printed in 2007 in Philadelphia. Neat, you can see exactly where they're from. I have one of my pennies that we used in the uh, triangle game that has an S on it. And we haven't talked about an S, but that means it came from San Francisco. Mm, way out on the West Coast. Right. Yeah, why don't you tell where it is? And then the final one would be a W, is that right? Yes, for West Point. Mm, that's one of the military academies, correct? It is. Um, and so now pretty much there they make um, coin sets. And so usually those, those coins wouldn't be in circulation unless someone 
um, opened up a set and put it out in circulation. You know, speaking of coin sets, I've got one here that was in circulation. Uh, my family used to collect the state quarters back when they were having a new one for each state. So it took us a long time and a lot of searching, but we eventually collected every single state from uh, uh, the 50 United States here. And each, each, uh, each one has its different quarter with a little uh, picture, which would be the relief part of the coin that's specific to that state. Yeah, see, so you know, you've done a better job. I still am missing some of mine. Oh, let me know what you need. I might be able to find some for you. <laughs> now, just recently, I finished a really cool set that's from World War II. Oh, wow. And it has um, the pennies. During World War II, they had some pennies that were um, not penny colored, not copper colored, but were zinc. And so I have those. And then the nickels were not made of nickels uh, then because again, they used that metal um, with the war. And on the back, it tells me which mint, which was pretty cool. But this was a book my grandmother had started and I was just able to finish it recently. So um, well, my family's cool. been collecting coins for a while. That's really exciting. Yeah. I didn't know that they're made of different, different metals at that point, but it makes sense. So we've uh, we've learned a little bit about the different kind of parts of the coin here, Declan and Flint and Flannery. So I'm going to share with our, our folks at home uh, a picture that shows the different parts that we've talked about. And I think the only one that we haven't talked about yet uh, specifically is uh, the, the field. We talked right. about the rim being the, the raised edge and where uh, where some of the minting inscriptions are. We've talked about the inscription being all the different uh, words on top of the coin. Uh, the bust being the head or the side of the, the side with the picture's head. And then uh, the relief is anything that's raised and the field is anything that's blank around that. What do you mean a bust? It's the bust of the president. That's um, George Washington. Um, Jared, so what does it mean when it's yes. raised? When it's raised, that means you can kind of feel it with your fingers that it's up off of the surface of the, uh, the coin. So if you hold it flat and you rub your finger over it, you can feel that some parts are raised up above the flatness. Is ours raised? So um, if you took like a piece of paper, uh -huh. say you put the coin down, uh -huh. Say maybe you took a pencil or a crayon and rubbed it. Would that would that make a difference? Yeah. yeah. I think let's try it. So I've got my paper here. I've got my coin underneath. I think uh, Declan and Flannery are doing that too. I've got my pencil. I'm just going to color over top of that coin and see what happens. And if you look there, you can see that I had a, a large coin. You can tell that from there, Julia? Yeah, I can tell that that's a quarter. You do a better job than I do. <laughs> well, thank you. Can we see yours? Got me. If I can. The other cool thing about uh, these uh, coins being raised is if I stick my hand in my pocket, I can kind of feel out what coins I have without even looking at them. So if I stick my hand in my pocket here with uh, five or six coins here, and I kind of feel around to see uh, what's on the front and the back, and then particularly around that rim that we talked about, I can tell that some of them have these little ridges on them and some of them do not. So if I pull this out, I think I've got one with the rim, which would be my quarter, and one without, or the the uh, the the, uh, the etchings, which would be my penny. Okay. So um, the other thing is when they had the ridging on them, it would help them last longer. But when the coins were made of pure silver, so people wouldn't shave them down, 
because if they shaved them down um, too much, then they um, it wouldn't be worth worth the value. Mm -hmm. Oh. Mm -hmm. Makes a lot of sense. These also don't have that. Ah, oh. it's kind of a kind of amazing that they used to be made out of silver. Yes. Mom made out of silver. Because then the value is actually based on the weight of the coin. So they shave some off. I like your rubbings there. They look great. So if you look at the like edge of a coin, you would see, you know, maybe like a copper line through it. Mm -hmm. But if you had one that was pure silver, it wouldn't have the the different color. The I different guess. color. I don't think I have any silver coins out here in my collection. Nope. All of mine have that copper in it. See, right. Copper. So one of the things is when we talked about how a coin was made. Um, oh wow, that's some good drawing there. Is that Flannery's? Yeah. 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 Why is my good too? Oh yeah, I see that. I'm sure it good is. Job. I just can't see it right now. It's um, <laughs> it's the Statue of Liberty on the back of the presidential one dollar coin. Oh yeah, I can see it. Yeah. yeah. Very good. So we're saying when they or make the coin, they and they press it. Did they see um, my... So here. Okay. Now what do you like? Learn that so I think we have a, a couple small games that you can play with coins, right, Julia? We do. So uh, Flannery and um, Declan, um, do you have a roll of pennies? I think mom might have a roll of pennies for you. Yeah. So how many pennies or do you think are going to be in here? Oh, it's a little bit heavy. Oh, nice. heavy? So there's 50 cents. So guys, how many pennies does it take to make 50 cents? Pennies are one cent. So it would take 50 of them. So it's going to take 50 of them. Yeah. So one of the things we can guess how many of the pennies are going to be heads and how many of them are going to be tails. We dump them out on our table. We can jump it out on the table and see. What do you think? How many heads will there be, D? Um, 50. You think they're all going to be heads? No. Well, <laughs> like if you dump them out, how many of them will show up as heads? And how many will show up as tails? Hmm. See, I just dumped mine out. Let's write down what our answers are. And I can 30, see there's some he 30, heads 30, and there's some no, tails 30 right here. Heads. 30 heads. So how many would be left over, do you know? Uh, 30 tails. 20. Very good. Good job. All right, 20 and 30. All right. Now, Jared, another thing, another game you could play when you're sorting them is mm -hmm. how old are they? Okay, put them from oldest to youngest. Mm -hmm. Now, so now start counting up. Here's heads. I'll count the I heads. I want to maybe guess how many of them were any of them made the year you were born. Mm, that's a very specific year. I think it might be hard to find one like that, but maybe maybe one or two. Okay. 2014. Do you have any 1994s over there? I'm born in 2019. 14. 2014? Maybe there's a 2014. Let's look for a 2014 one. I have a 2001. I have a 2014. I just found it. Oh, very good. I've got a 1995. Oh, is that one that's from the year you were born? It's probably going to be my oldest one so ones. far is 1965. That's getting close to my birthday, but not quite. I have a 2012. I have a 74. Now, Jared, what am I looking for for you? Uh, 1994. 94. I have a 95, which is close. How many you got? You said 1994? That's right. I've got a D. 
We have 25 heads. Wow. What are the chances of that? What even? What did you get? Oh, you kept flipping them, Flannery. So how many, tell them how many heads we have and how many tails we have. We have 25 heads. And then how many tails are there? Um, so your your was stacked half and half. Wow! It was. We had twenty five heads and twenty five tails. Wait, Does anybody have two thousand twelve? That's pretty cool. I found a nineteen ninety three. Ooh, look at this one. So this is another special run of them. This is. Um, in the year 2009, they ran some special pennies. Found in 1994. Yay. They had some special pennies that had a run of pictures from Lincoln's life. So this has like a log cabin on it, I think. That's where he was born. That's on this one right here. I don't know if you guys can see it. Oh, that's cool. I like that one. Log cabin on it. When's my birthday? Oh, I have one from 1948. You made that's pretty old. So does that look like the other penny? It was 20, uh, 13. It's, doesn't, it has um the wheat Did socks on the back. No, yeah. not when I, when I bored. When I bored. Can we see it? When my, when now, I'm my see. pennies, yep, I had seven. 29 heads and 21 tails. Nice. 2013 is so. It's going to be one of the shinier ones. The cool thing about uh, heads or tails, if you're if you're thinking about math, and uh, their their pennies showed this exactly, is that it's just as likely that you'll have a heads or a tails. So it's a 50-50 chance, which means if you keep doing it over and over and over again, you'll likely get the same number of heads and the same number of tails, just like you guys had. Mm hmm. You see where it is. We also got a Canadian penny in our mix. Okay. Yeah. So your roll of pennies wasn't worth fifty cents. No. Two hundred nine. Forty nine cents. Yeah. Um, Fantastic. Now uh, we're talking about uh, how ma how many cents we have here. If I uh, look at my piggy bank here, which is just an old glass I stick all of my coins in. It's kind of hard for me to tell exactly how much money is in here without counting it out. Well, I might be able to guess. Does anybody else have a, a, a piggy bank there? Oh, let's see. I have a, a piggy bank that sits on my dryer. So oh. when any coins go through the wash, they get put in. And every now and then it even gets a few dollars put in here. And then our family kind of saves it up for when we go on vacation to do something special. And um, it's getting kind of full. Yeah. They would want to maybe guess at home how much they think might be in my my piggy bank here. Yeah, let's ask the folks at home. So if you're uh, if you're saving up for something special there, Julia, uh, maybe I can interest you in some Scout's own maple syrup. Oh, I might <laughs> even get. do you think is in that piggy bank? Uh, I will tell you before um, we all start. Home, I'm buying this really cool water bottle at the scout shop, and I'm hoping in a few weeks I'll be able to go back in and buy that. But this is for our family, so for mm. things that I want to collect, I have a Beaumont Scout mm. Reservation mug that's full. Of, I don't really know, so I'm just gonna say a lot. Full of coins. <laughs> I like a lot. And then I actually counted it a little earlier. And I know I can buy myself some Scout's own maple syrup and nice. almost some pancake mix. Wow. So you've got how least... much would be in this cup? So you've got about. I know that uh, Scout's own maple syrup, syrup costs $12. Mm hmm. And the pancake mix costs ten dollars. Right. So you have more than twelve, but less than twelve plus ten. So how much would that be, Flannery? You know how many twelve plus ten is? 
22. Right. So I almost have enough for that. I've got like $20.13. Wow. That's a massive in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It actually has a few, a few quarters, a few dimes, a couple of nickels. Add yeah, up. I like it when my piggy bank has uh, has quarters in it because it means I get to count by 25 cents and yeah. it goes up much faster. Uh, I think, Julia, you have $36.08 in your piggy bank. $36.08. Oh, I, ha I have a little bit more than that. Oh, Ooh, very good. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, one year we had over fifty dollars. So fifty-six. Got... Oh, I wish I had fifty-six, but not quite. Sixty-six. Sixty-six. Oh, yes, <laughs> that would be a good amount too. Mm. So. so right now it's sitting at like forty-two dollars. Forty-two dollars. That's so really great. Yeah. People should check their pockets before they get their laundry done. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I, well, I, 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 I encourage, I like to feed the bank. Yeah. I'm glad that you're trustworthy with that money, uh, Julia, that, that you know that that goes into your family fund and not into your personal fund. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, it's yeah. so down there on the dryer, so everyone kind of helps keep everyone honest. Very good. Yeah. Well, I have one more, one more math-related game with our coins here. Are there any, uh, any math whizzes over there in your house? Declan's pretty much a math whiz. Declan, you want to try my game? Let's try the game. All right. So what I need you to do is select four coins from your stack of pennies there. All right. So pick four, four of them at random. Choose four of them. How much are pennies? Choose four. Then just take four pennies out and he'll tell you what the game is. Now, on each of those four pennies, I want you to look at the last two digits of their year. So like we talked earlier, I had a, uh, a quarter from 1966. So that quarter is going to be 66. Just take those last two digits. 74, 19, 18, 18. Jacqueline. Perfect. You got four. What's 18 so, plus 18? Uh, here's one. Okay. I'm going to add them all together. Remember that. that it's, um, it's not. That's not the answer. It's 36. Which one is that? And then 74 plus 19 is. That's fine. That's fine. I like to think of it with uh, nice round numbers. So if I think of 75 plus 20, which is pretty close to 74 plus 19, that makes it a little bit easier. Do you know what 75 plus 20 is? 75 plus 20. Count by 10 from 75. Yeah, count by 10. I don't know. 75, you got this, 85, 95, 95. And then we're two above what we need to be. So we need to take two away from 95. Yes. So 93. Oh, two. Okay, it's 93. No, it's 92 because it's two away from 95. No, that's yeah. three away from 95. It'll be 95. Very close. Three. Three. So this is a game that you can play with any sort of coins you have at home. You just select four at random, and then you start adding them up. So we got to 93, and then we're adding together our last, our last two, right, which was 36. 36 is that right? 93. I'm coming out to 129. Is that what you guys got too? Yes. All right. Awesome. 
No, we learned about statistics. We learned about adding up uh, values of coins and you can add up the numbers of the years. So lots of different ways you can do math with coins. Absolutely. So one of the things when I talked about the coins, um, the ones from World War II and not being um, made of copper. And when I was going through some coins, I ended up with a magnet and I had a Canadian quarter and the magnet sticks to it. Sucked it right up, huh? Oh. Yeah. But a US quarter, it, it won't stick. I was really kind of surprised. Interesting. Be easy, be easy to find uh, Canadian coins with a, with a magnet then if you're searching on a beach or something. Yes. Yeah. Oh, it looks like uh, uh, the Perry family who is joining us got to, to 129 as well. So good job. Uh, the... Yay. Nice. All right. I think we have one uh, one last activity here, right, Julia? We, we do. And it was um, kind of weighing the coins. The so one oh, thing we did were. was we made a. So none, so none of these are magnetic. Oh. She was a she had. Oh, it looks like you made a scale there. So you can test uh, how much one side weighs compared to the other. Yeah. Hold on, guys. Can you wait this moment? We also have a scale. Ooh, can we see it? Yes. If you're following along at home in the description oh, of this so video, good. there is a link with uh, instructions on how to make it. But I'd love to hear how you guys made your scales. So we use cups, Here, can you do a side so they can see. So luckily, our Beautiful. ruler had a hole in the center. So I used a tent stake to hold it underneath. Let me see if I can. Make this a little less. Oh, nope, perfect. That's not <laughs> so we put the tent stake under a book. Uh -huh. We can balance the ruler on it. And now we have cups just taped on with some string. Oh, very good. So right. the uh, the ruler is is uh, is held down by the book, which is pretty heavy, and yeah. then that lets it balance between the two different sides. Yep. And luckily, yeah. So we had that hole right in the center, so we could easily do that. Could you use an Allen wrench for that? And he's Could you use an Allen wrench? Yeah. I don't want it to actually look perfect. <laughs> or I think our other example was you can put a binder clip on like a paint stick or a ruler that doesn't have a hole in the middle of it. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's what Julia I think that's that. exactly what Julia did. Huh? Yep. And you could put like a pencil through there or an Allen wrench. Allen wrench works really nice because it's got that. 90 degree that'll keep it upright. Very keep it from falling off. Yeah, I used oh, myself shit. my joint Cub Scout pencil for that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you guys want to weigh the coins? Yeah. Money. Do you want to see how many pennies it takes to make like, up a one dollar? One dollar is big, right? All right, here, here's pennies. Why don't we choose? Why don't we see how many pennies it takes? You count them when you as you put them in, okay? While you're putting them in there, I'll show uh, everybody how uh, the instructions on how to make your scale, and we'll see how many it takes to balance those out. Getting close. Oh, wait, wait. My uh, dollar coin just fell off. Looks like we have, let's see if it stops. Yeah, let it go. Let's see how well it bounces. Well, I need to put one more. Here, what if you put a dime in? Because the penny was too many. Eight pennies and a dime is pretty perfectly balanced. <laughs> Show me. Move to the side so they can see. It's looking pretty good. Henry, can you tell them how many coins we used? Do you remember how many? So you had eight pennies in there, right? Nine. Nine total coins, eight pennies, and one dime. Measured up to one. Eight pennies and one dime. And dollar coin. 
All together make nine. Yes. Uh, I already know that. Okay. Because I've been practicing counting. Well, I think that's really interesting. It's it, nope. in general, it seems like the bigger the coin or the uh, the the more expensive the coin, the bigger and heavier it is. Nope. Except that yeah. your dime right. was the smallest one. Mm -hmm. No. Ooh, now one side is heavier again. No All right, so why don't we try measuring something else? Want to see how many quarters we get? Oh, yeah. To equal a dollar? Yeah. So in, uh, in value, four quarters oh, equals a dollar, but let's see how many it takes to make the weights the same. Now, are you all, what type of dollar are you using? The old, larger one. Okay. Ooh, where's the, the other one? The one. The other one's right here. Okay, definitely not doing the big ones. Yeah, no pretend money. Pretend. Here are you. You would have given a no, bitch. No, that's, that's not money. That's bitch. So here, why don't we swap it out for the presidential dollar coin that we have. Which is a lot smaller, right? Hold it up yep. to this one. Here, let's show how much smaller it is. Oh yeah, lots about smaller. Three quarters of size. Yeah. yeah. So we put this one. Yeah. All right. Then so do you want to see that side's pretty heavy? We got to make the 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 top side get even now. Maybe a fifty cent piece is bigger. She got a little. I think it is. Oh. Oh. Yep. Too much. A little bigger. So the fifty cent. Hey, can you move so they can see? We put a fifty cent piece in here. Uh huh. And it's heavier than the presidential dollar coin. So sometimes it's it doesn't it doesn't matter how much it's value to how much it weighs. We're closer to the size of right. the quarter. To try a quarter and see what we Oh, quarter almost weighs enough. Well, maybe you should add a a dime to that. Here, because the dime is pretty small. Oh, that looks that pretty magic cool. dime did it. Wow. <laughs> what was our total there on each side? It was one dollar on that side, and then thirty-five cents on this side. One quarter and a dime. One quarter and one dime. Wow. <laughs> I could do that all day. <laughs> yes. Here, it's let's really see. The value used to be all based on weight before. Your heavier, heavier coins and dollar? heavier metals would be worth more. Here. A you long time ago, they had gold coins. So that would be pretty cool. Put, yeah. Put one at a time and count. Um, two. Three. Oh. oh, I think it might be. A, hold on, it looks like it's even. I'll take that one out. Okay. What's the Let final result there? there? So, how many pennies was that? Three. Three? Oh, yeah. So, three pennies. It's just about the same. Let's put that dime in. <laughs> See if that magic dime makes them even. No. Dime did it again. Too much? Just a little. No. Well, cool. Do we have any other activities for our scouts here today, Julia, or is that our last one? No, I think that's kind of our last one, but I hope people enjoy doing this and maybe think about collecting some coins. Mm -hmm. What? Uh, Jared, if you were going to collect some coins, what might you um, pick to collect? Well, I've already collected my state quarters, but I do have another collection here that uh, I think is kind of fun. And it's smashed pennies. So you can see these aren't round like normal pennies because they have been elongated. They've been smushed out. Do you see that, Beth Lannery? Yeah, like those um, look like the ones that we get from the zoo. Yeah, exactly. So if you go places, they often have 
Souvenir coins. Oh, good grandma. <laughs> oh, look, a dog. Our dog, yeah. yeah. So, for example, this one is from Ruby Falls. They've, uh, they've stamped their name into it. Just like, uh, just like the original coin had the uh, the bust and inscriptions and all the things we talked about earlier stamped into it. So now I've got a cool collection of one cent souvenirs <clears throat> with uh, lots of memories in them. Yeah. Jared, I have a question for your pennies. Yes. Is it? I feel like there's a lifelong debate about if smashing pennies is legal or not. <laughs> Do you know if it's legal or not? I have heard that debate, but I don't know if I know the answer either. But I do know. I don't know the answer too. I do know that when I was very young, my grandma took me to make a real smashed penny on a railroad. And I can confirm that this did Ooh. not derail a train. So nice. Yeah, there's at least that going for us. That's so cool. It's all That's, piggy bank. That one it doesn't have anything written on it. You can just barely make out the building on the on the back and maybe a head on the front, but it's all been smushed pretty flat by the weight of the train. Wow. Very guys, cool. can I show you guys all piggy bank? Yes. Please, yes. I ah, like very that. good. Yours looks like mine. You can see right into it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, Michelle, Declan, Flannery, and I didn't catch your husband's name there. Josh. Josh, thank you guys so much for joining us today to do our Wolf Den meeting. This has been a lot of fun. I've learned a little bit and uh, it's always kind of interesting to look back through how old the items that we have in our houses. I never would have guessed I had something from 1966 in here and some probably even older than that. Yes, absolutely. Thank you for having us. And Very good. And so guys, if you're a wolf and you've completed this, then you need to let your den leader know so you can get your belt loop. Yeah, so we worked on, I believe, all seven requirements here today. If you make your scale and, and participate alongside these activities, you did requirements one through seven. Yeah. And uh, if you're looking much. for, <laughs> very nice. If you're looking for more uh, fun scouting at home activities, you can check out our website at lecbsa.org. And uh, I definitely encourage everybody to participate in our camper all this weekend on uh, Saturday to Sunday. There'll be uh, fun challenges about setting up a campsite in your backyard or in your home and uh, following along with some recipes and seeing some scouting activities from all over the world. We have people from not just the United States, but also all over the world participating in that this weekend. So check out information on our website and you can, you can even order a patch to show that you're involved with our first virtual camper all. Sounds like it'll be lots of fun. It yes. definitely will. And thank you, Julia, for joining us today as well and putting a lot of this together. You're our resident coin expert. So I appreciate you being on today. Well, thank you for having me. Sure thing. We'll be doing more den meetings for all of our uh, all of our different levels of Cub Scouts throughout the week. So stay tuned for more. But uh, other than that, I hope everybody's staying home and staying safe. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.